Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Continuing our discussion on velocity near a point, we have seen that the difference in velocity between two points are given by two terms, one depending on the symmetric part of the velocity gradient tensor and the other is the anti symmetric part of the velocity gradient tensor. About the symmetric part of the velocity gradient tensor, we have discussed that this actually represents a straining motion, which can be decomposed into two part, one is an isotropic expansion and the other part is deformation without change in volume. <coughs> one part is ch with change in volume, the other part without change in volume, just deformation. The second part of the velocity, second contribution that is the anti symmetric contribution. If you remember that we had the anti symmetric contribution delta u i a is r j xi i j and by definition xi <coughs> i j we wrote the anti symmetric part of the velocity gradient tensor half of d u y d x j minus d u j d x i. We have already stated that this clearly shows that the diagonal terms are all 0. When i is j, i and j are same, this term gives 0. That is j 1 1, j 2 2, j 3 3, they are all 0. Okay. Let's write j 1 1, j 2 2, j 3 3, they are all 0. And also, j 1 2 and j 2 1 are just equivalent opposite. Okay. So, we can write j 2 1 equal to minus j 1 2 and similarly, j 2 3 is minus j 3 2, j 3 1 is minus. <coughs> So, which clearly shows that we have basically three independent term, three independent terms. Out of the six non-zero, three are independent, the other three are just opposite of that. And hence, we said that j i j can be written as that alternative tensor epsilon i j k and omega k. Okay, we can complete our this definition here itself, but we will do little more. See, in the definition of j i j, the initial definition of j i j, there is a half. This, if we write just this, this half can be contained within omega, but we do not want to keep half within omega. So, we keep this half separately again and also we introduce a negative sign. So, that in a later definition of omega, we will not have a negative sign. We take a negative sign here. <laughs> this minus half just to avoid another minus half in the definition of omega, which we will be coming across now. <laughs> omega k, which has now three components, can obviously thought of as a conventional vector having three components. <laughs> And this velocity then can be written as delta u i the anti symmetric part as minus half epsilon i j k r j omega k, which is, which is clearly this epsilon i j k r j omega k is the cross product of vector r and vector omega. 
Okay. So, this is basically minus of half r cross omega in your conventional vector notation or we can write it as half omega cross r. or coming back to tensorial notation half epsilon i j k omega j r k. <coughs> now, this is a very familiar velocity omega cross r or rather half omega cross r what does it mean? Velocity of this fluid element which is at point x plus r that is r distance away from point x has this value omega cross r or half omega cross r what does it mean? Why do you come across this velocity omega cross r? In a rigid body rotation about distance r or about an axis which is at distance r with an angular velocity of half omega. So, in this case the particle at point x plus r is rotating about that point x with an angular velocity of half omega. If it is so then this will be the velocity. So, this part of this relative velocity represents a rigid body rotation about point x or about an axis passing through point x, the angular velocity is half omega. However, see in if you look to the flow, so I next class I will uh, try to bring you some streamlines and others, so that uh, you can see eventually you will not see that the fluid is really rotating. So, this rotational part of the velocity will be needing a little more interpretation, we will come to it, but let at this stage say that the velocity has a contribution which is due to a rigid body rotation or the fluid velocity has in general a rigid body type of rotational contribution with angular velocity half omega. This vector omega you can call it that rotational angular velocity of half, we can give another name to that rotational angular velocity. Let us call it this omega is half omega, okay. we can give the vectorial notation also. <coughs> this vector omega <coughs> is a very important fluid dynamical quantity and called as vorticity. Omega is called vorticity. Can you say what are the three components of this omega, omega 1, omega 2, omega 3 that you can obtain from our earlier definition? What is omega 1? What will be omega 1? Look to that definition, xi i j is minus half epsilon i j k omega k, we want omega 1 that is k is 1. Okay. If k is 1, then we know this epsilon i j k has non-zero value when all i j k are all different. Since k is 1 now, this i and j has to be either 2 and 3, 1 is 2 the other is 3. Let us take it 2 3 1 that is epsilon i j k is epsilon 2 3 1 
epsilon 2 3 1 is a cyclic in cyclic order. So, epsilon 2 3 1 is plus 1. So, this term becomes then j 2 3 i is 2 j is 3. So, j 2 3 is minus half omega 1. Now, you can write what is j 2 3 from the here half is already there of course, a minus will be there. So, what it will be? Now, tell me what is omega 1? Hmm? Omega 1 is hmm? d u 3 d x 2 minus d u 2 d x 3. Yes. Similarly, you can write the other component of omega also. What will be omega 2? Omega 2, again let us come here. Then, since k is 2, i and j has to be 1 and 3. Okay. Let us take it 1, 3, 2. 1, 3, 2 is not cyclic order. 1, 3, 2 is not cyclic order. So, I epsilon 1, 3, 2 is minus 1. Okay. So, j 1, 3 is half omega 2. Now, find what is j 1, 3? Half is already there. do u 3 do x 1 minus d u 1 d x 3. Yes, it is correct, you should check. It is 1 3 no, oh, achha, 1 3. So, it will be and this is 1. Okay. <coughs> then what will be omega 3 that also you can complete. It will be 1 2 or 2 1 which one will give the i j can be 1 2 or 2 1, hmm. 2 1 will give what? 2 1 3 is negative. So, 2 if you take 2 1 you will get it directly. So, it is d u 2 2 1, i is 2 j is 1, d u 2 d x 1 minus d u 1 d x 2. Okay. So, these are the three components of the vorticity vector. You can see that I hope you are familiar with the Carl operator. This implies that omega is Carl of u. Okay. So, that is the final definition of this vorticity vector omega, it is curl of the velocity vector. If the vorticity is 0, if you find the vorticity is 0, then the flow is called irrotational. If the vorticity everywhere in a flow is 0, then the flow is called irrotational omega equal to 0 everywhere the flow is irrotational.
Now, think about say any closed surface surrounding point that x, okay. any closed surface enclosing point x. Let us think about for simplicity a two dimensional picture any closed curve surrounding that point x and again without losing any generality we can consider that closed surface to be just a circle. So, think about a small circle say of radius a surrounding the point x where the vorticity is given by omega. Now, what is this quantity? Instead of omega, we are writing curl of u again, curl of u dot n d a about that. How much is what is this? You are fam familiar with this? Hmm? Divergence? Curl of a vector, surface integral of a curl of a vector is what? Stokes theorem. This is called Stokes theorem. Is the line integral on the curve that encloses that area, that is the boundary of that area. That is in this case, since the area we are considering a circle of radius a, this curve is the circumference of that circle. Since it is a closed curve, that is what is the symbol. Now, let us say that this area is small, we are considering a small area. Then, within that small area, we can consider approximately that this curl of u or the vorticity is nearly uniform within a small over a small region the vorticity is more or less uniform. Then what is the value of this left hand side integral? The left hand side Yes. Curl of u is nearly uniform over that small area of the circle of radius a. Then how much is this integration? Huh? This curl of u dot n into the area. So, we can write that for a circle of radius a this becomes pi square into <coughs> we'll write it this pi square we'll just write as half into 2 pi square just simply a mathematical manipulation half into 2 pi square. <coughs> and then we write
out of this a square leave one a what is the rest no that is 2 pi i is the circumference including this integration the integration divided by 2 pi a what it is so what is u this integration this integration is the total velocity over the path that we are dividing by the circumference so that is velocity averaged over the circumference okay so this becomes tangential velocity u dot dr only the tangential part will remain since it is u u dot dr the part component of u which is normal to that path is vanished so it is basically only the tangential part the total tangential velocity we can call it if there is something like that of course it is not a not any physical quantity so this is average of the tangential velocity average over the circumference so this is 1 by a into tangential velocity averaged over the circumference And you see this half of omega that is the angular velocity we defined earlier that the angular velocity is half omega. So, the angular velocity here will be interpreted in this sense instead of your conventional angular velocity the angular velocity here will be interpreted as the tangential velocity averaged over the circumference by the distance. <coughs> So, that is what is the meaning of the angular velocity in this context. <coughs> so, now coming finally, that the velocity at any point in a fluid motion is the velocity at a neighborhood point or at a point which is near to it plus a velocity due to some straining motion plus a velocity due to a rigid body rotation. Mathematically we will before writing mathematically we will say or let us write it first mathematically that u i you see where we started u i x plus r I am not, not giving those vector notations is u i x plus R j e i j plus R j j i j. This happens to be u i x plus you can write it as d d r i of of R j R k E j k plus what it was half epsilon I j k omega j R k. So, velocity at any point is given by sum of three contribution, sum of three contribution the first contribution u i x is velocity at any point
is sum of a uniform velocity a uniform velocity plus a straining motion a straining motion which itself is again a sum of an isotropic expansion plus a deformation without change in volume. So, a straining motion this is equal to a, an isotropic expansion plus a straining motion without change in volume. plus a rigid body rotation <laughs> nothing need to be done for the uniform velocity that is just a uniform velocity obviously must be known <coughs> what we earlier mentioned that in aero aerodynamics we consider the problem in this way that in the real case the problem is a body is moving with a certain velocity through the fluid in aerodynamics we convert that problem to that the body is rest the fluid is moving with equal and opposite velocity so that equal and opposite velocity or the velocity of that body that is what is the uniform velocity can be taken. So, that as far as the uniform velocity part is concerned there is nothing to be done it is already known. So, if we can find these two part the contribution due to the straining motion and contribution due to the rigid body rotation for a given problem we know the entire velocity field. Now, before proceeding further that is how to find the velocity distribution in these cases in a discussion, we will take up one or two say numerical example to illustrate some of the things that we have done. Uh, Consider a two dimensional flow, consider a two dimensional flow and say the Eulerian velocity at a point Eulerian velocity at a point x y at time t is given by or the simply the Eulerian velocity is given by the Eulerian velocity or the Eulerian velocity components let us say we are giving in component form. Let us say the Eulerian velocity components are Eulerian velocity components are given by u equal to a into x plus y plus c t. It is an unsteady flow as you can see u is function of time. So, e <coughs> and the other component v component let us say is b into x plus y plus e t a b c e are constant a b c e are constant <coughs> uh, 
find the displacement of a fluid particle in the Lagrangian system. find the displacement of a fluid particle in the Lagrangian system. How will you do it? How will you do it? Remembering that the Eulerian velocity are velocity at a point. Any particle passing through that point will have that velocity at that instant when it is just passing it. Once it passes, of course, it will not have that velocity. Another particle which will come to that position will have that velocity then. How to do it? Any any suggestion how to do it? Which formula? But where is uh, two point are uh, coming in this uh, context? In this case is two points uh, required? Do we need to consider velocity at another point? Think see this is the velocity at the point x y at time t. Okay. So, any fluid particle that is passing to that point at time t is having this velocity a fluid particle that is passing through the point x y at time t will have this velocity at that instant velocity is of course, always instantaneous. So, let us say that this particle was initially at time t equal to t 0 was at x 0 y 0 and that particle is passing through the point x y at time t. Then for that particle considering x as a variable, x is the position vector or say x y are the component of that position vector. Hmm? Getting the idea? Think about a particle which was at say x 0 y 0 at time t 0 the same particle is passing through this point x y at time t. 
then at that instant these are the velocity component of that particle. Now, knowing the velocity component at a particular instant, can you get its displacement? That is what you need to find the displacement. So, at a particular instant you know the velocity of the particle which was at x 0 y 0 during time t 0. <coughs> Considering a particle let us write it for a particle at x 0 t 0 at time t 0 at time t 0 and passing through x sorry x 0 y 0 this is what you are telling passing through x y at time t the particle has has the velocity u v at at time t that is the this is the velocity of the particle also. Now, instead of looking to the point think about the particle treat this x as the position of the particle and let x change in the Eulerian description x do not change in the Lagrangian description x change x now represents the position vector and then <coughs> x y is the position vector then of the particle at time t and you can clearly write that d x d t equal to a into x plus y plus c t and d y d t is b into x plus y plus e t. This I think you can solve simultaneously to the <coughs> I will I am not going to solve these equations here. So, I will, but I will give you the answers for this problem x is equal to the minus c 1 these of course, are constant of integration this c 1 c 2 whatever I will write they are constant of integration my minus c 1 plus a by b c 2 e to the power a plus b t minus a into c plus e by a plus b square into t plus b c minus a e 
by 2 into a plus b t square minus e plus c by a plus b whole square. C 1 and C 2 are constant of integration can be evaluated using the initial condition that at time t equal to t 0 the particle was at x is x 0 y is y 0 C 1 C 2 <coughs> and the y is given as C 1 plus C 2 into sorry C 2 into e to the power a plus b t minus b into c plus e by a plus b or into t minus b c minus a e by 2 into a plus b into t square. <coughs> At t equal to t 0 which you can take even 0, t 0 can be taken as 0 also. At t equal to 0, x equal to x 0, y equal to y 0 and C 1 and C 2 can be obtained from there. Once again, let us say that the Eulerian velocity components are given by u equal to x by t, Eulerian velocity components are given by u equal to x by t v equal to y w equal to 0. <coughs> Find the strict lines find the strict lines. These are the Eulerian velocity components, you know how to find the streamlines. Streamlines are given by the equations d x by u equal to d y by v equal to d z by w. See in this case of course, basically the flow is two dimensional. Since w is given as 0 at all time.
strict lines we remember that all the particles that cross through a fixed point. <coughs> first find the trajectory of the particle exactly in the same manner what we did in the last case. Okay. Again consider a particle which was at some location at time t equal to 0 is crossing this point x y z of course, math you need not uh, consider just a constant z 0 you can keep <laughs> and then just like the earlier case here also we have d x by d t equal to x by t d y by d t equal to y and d z d t equal to 0. So, the first equation straight away gives x equal to x 0 into t by t 0 x by x 0 equal to t by t 0. This equation is d x by x equal to d t by t log x equal to log t. So, x by x x naught equal to t by t naught. So, you see this becomes the trajectory and what what about y, y equal to d y by y equal to d t log y equal to t plus constant. So, what is y? this equation is d y by y equal to d t. Then y equal to yes y naught e to the power t minus t naught ok fine and z is of course, a constant we just call it z 0. So, this is the trajectory of the particles which, which has passed through the point x 0, x 0, y 0, z 0. You can call it this is the trajectory of all those particles which has passed through point x 0, y 0, z 0. Now, instead of x 0, y 0, z 0, we can take any other point and then find what is that path just from this relation itself by taking the inverse relation if we take the inverse relation, the particle which are say let us say are x 1 y 1 z 1, hmm. the particle at x 1 y 1 z 1 at all time can be obtained by the inverse relation, only x 0 y 0 z 0 will be replacing by x 1 y 1 z 1 or oh, sorry this x will be replaced by x y z will be replaced by x 1 y 1 z 1. All those particles which will pass through a fixed point x 1 y 1 z 1 at all time will again be obtained from this equation x 1 equal to this y 1 z 1 x y z can be replaced by x 1 y 1 z 1 
and then we can inverse the relation. Say particle at x 1 y 1 z 1 at all times to make it all time let us say that uh, hmm, any time between what we should write some other let us say capital T. Okay. What will be this for y 0? What will be y 0? y 1 e to the power minus Okay, t plus t naught and for z there is no change oh, sorry z 0 equal to z 1. For this t is when you say all time that is what actually mean that is what is the meaning of all time here. <coughs> and then since you are looking for a line this x 0 y 0 z 0 we can now make it a variable the strict lines will be this is the path of all those particles which are passing through point x 1 y 1 z 1. All those particles which are passing through point x 1 y 1 z 1 are will be found on these surface. So, that <coughs> velocity at a point, the velocity at a point are given by u equal to c x plus 2 omega 0 y velocity at a point x y z is given by that is u x y z we are considering as in this case a steady flow is c x plus 2 omega 0 y plus u 0 b is c y plus v 0 and w find the velocity at the at a neighboring point x 1 y 1 z 1.
this is of course, quite straightforward problem just you have to find out those two quantity the vorticity omega which is given by curl of these velocities okay, and the rate of strain tensor. I do not know whether I mentioned this name or not E i j that tensor E i j is called the rate of strain tensor or sometime in brief short strain rate tensor rate of strain or strain rate tensor E i j. So, this is a straightforward problem you have to find just a few derivatives. Okay, so, you can complete this problem there is really nothing in it <coughs> to explain as I was mentioning that uh, the streamlines that uh, streamline gives a very useful information and really a say picture of the flow a really picture of the flow. Of course, in your laboratory classes later on you will be seeing streamlines which will show you the flow, but uh, please remind if you can remind me before I come to the next class to bring some streamlines either in uh, say a static picture or a movie picture to show you in the class here. So, I am giving that responsibility to one of you please remind me before I come for the next class to bring those with me. Okay. <coughs> some static view of the streamlines that is streamline at one instant only. If the flow is steady of course, that uh, that is the only view mm. it is not changing, but for unsteady cases the streamlines will change. So, even a movie view will be perhaps more useful. So, if you remind me perhaps I will be bringing them. <coughs> 